Ayano Koji Kiyotaka is a serial winner. He wins in academics, chess, heck, he even excels in calligraphy. However, the reason for his success is actually not the brutal regimen he endured in the White Room. It is something much more fundamental. Ayano Koji wins effortlessly because he was taught the art of learning itself. In the next five minutes, you are going to learn about Ayano Koji's five-step framework that will literally skyrocket your grades, even while investing less time. But before we talk about the framework, let's first address some studying mistakes that are currently holding you back. If you don't correct these, your efforts will be as frustrating as working 12 hours in a factory only to receive a $2 check. Do you use the same study methods across all your exams, regardless of the exam format? For instance, you might rely on flashcards to memorize key terms from your history notes. While this could be effective for exams composed of multiple choice and matching questions, it's a bad idea if the exam primarily consists of short answer and essay questions that require a deeper analysis of broader concepts from the class. Rather, align your study strategies with the actual testing format you'll encounter. To stay with the history exam example, you would benefit more from practicing writing detailed explanations and arguments, or even engaging in critical discussions of historical trends, causes, and consequences if that is what you will have to do in the exam. Also, contrary to popular belief, stop taking notes in class. When you take notes in class, you can't completely focus on comprehending what the teacher is saying. Instead, write your notes after the class. Like this, you not only understand what the teacher taught better, but you are even training your memory. Make sure to either compare your notes with someone who took the in class or audio record the lecture for reference. Now that we talked about what not to do, let's get to the five-step framework. Do you ever feel like your brain just can't take in any new information? This stems from the fact that we need to be alert to initiate neuroplasticity. Becoming alert involves various mechanisms, but primarily the release of epinephrine in the brain and body. One straightforward method to increase alertness is taking 25 to 30 deep breaths while inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. After exhaling completely, Hold your breath for 15 to 60 seconds. Then, take a single inhalation and hold your breath again. Remember that it is important to avoid forcing the breath hold. Just resume normal breathing once you feel the urge to do so. You already know how important focus is for studying, but have you heard of this research-backed technique to get unbreakable focus in under a minute? Just pick a point in your room to stare at for 30 to 60 seconds. While doing this exercise, allow yourself to blink naturally, but try to minimize any thoughts or distractions. By directing your visual attention to a singular focal point, your cognitive processes align, which allows your mind to streamline its focus onto fewer stimuli. Put simply, focusing your eyes on a single point improves your ability to concentrate, because mental focus follows visual focus. If you are interested in a more in-depth guide on this topic, you can check out my masterclass on focus. Allow me to introduce you to a fascinating learning technique known as doing nothing. Now hear me out. Anytime you are learning something, it pays to have random intervals of around 10 seconds where you disengage from active cognitive tasks and let your mind wander. This is so powerful because when we pause, the brain areas active in the activity we were just doing don't stop, but instead replay the patterns of activity that occurred during the actual task. However, this replay happens 10 times faster than the original learning. Leveraging the gap effect not only makes it easier for the brain to retrieve the learned information, but also allows it to make novel connections and solutions that may not have been obvious during the active learning phase. Immediately following a learning session, you should introduce a controlled stressor to trigger a spike in adrenaline. In essence, the spike of adrenaline post-learning acts as a mark that amplifies the brain's capacity for memory consolidation and ultimately enhances the retention of newly acquired knowledge. Remember, it is the emotional state you are in after you experience something that dictates whether you are going to learn it quickly. This is why research shows that caffeine intake directly after trying to learn something is so beneficial, as caffeine releases adrenaline. Another way to spike adrenaline immediately after a bout of learning is to take a cold shower, but remember that you should start slow if you are new to cold exposure. Okay, you have effectively studied and consolidated the knowledge with an adrenaline spike. Now, it is time for non-sleep deep rest. During NSDR, the brain transitions into a state of reduced arousal and the activity of the parasympathetic nervous system increases. This will have a noticeable effect on the depth of your learning and as an add-on will make it easier to sleep later. Furthermore, you can use NSDR as a preparatory phase for subsequent study sessions. This way, you can learn longer while still having cognitive resources available. What are some examples of NSDR? You could try out meditation, some very 
variation of deep breathing or progressive muscle relaxation. There are also many free protocols you can follow on YouTube. By the way, we just hit 30,000 subs. Thanks to everyone who made this possible. I see your comments, likes, and subs and really appreciate them. Also, comment below about your favorite and least favorite subject. Let's see which ones are the most popular in our community.